have a vision of how we want our life to turn out. Places we want to go, things we want to do. But unfortunately, life has a tendency to get mundane. Our jobs quickly become our first priority. And we get so caught up in our day-to-day -day lives that our identity suffers. Personal time turns into overtime. And instead of being who and what you want to be, you just become another name on a paycheck. And what for? Why do we put up with all of this monotony? Why can't we all have that vision of happiness we once had? Well, the truth is, we can. If you're lucky, you may find something that might make things a little more interesting. All over the world, there are various communities dedicated to breaking up the monotony and doing what they love despite judgment. Maybe we get tired of being kicked around by the trials and tribulations of the day-to-day. -day. What if instead you could be the hero? Wait for coming in. It's like living Dungeons and Dragons. If you've ever played a game like that or any MMORPG, it's, it's essentially the same thing. Instead of rolling dice and writing down scores and using your imaginations um, sitting around with a group of friends, we put on costumes, take on those caricatures, grab um, a piece of PVC pipe with a pool noodle and some duct tape, make a weapon, and actually go out adventuring. We write an overall story uh, that the players will act out in characters that they've created themselves. They are that character all weekend. There's science fiction LARPs, fantasy LARPs, uh, zombie LARPs. Uh, it's just a good escape out of the real mundane world. It's way more person to person for obvious reasons. I mean, it's just playing your fantasy. I definitely have one of those roles that um, doesn't have anything to do with my fantasy and geek, geek life. Um, I am a unit clerk working for Alberta Health Services. The unit clerk is the lady who sits at the nurse's desk at a hospital and makes the chart that hangs off the end of your bed. I'm in my seventh year of school, so I have five classes, and that's five days a week. And then I also work Sundays because I need to pay rent. I work for an engineering uh, survey firm. I actually got into LARPing due to uh, some friends. He told me he was going to be doing it. And I kind of We've all seen the videos where you see the guy on YouTube running around shelling lightning bolt and I was like, that's ridiculous. There's no way I'm getting involved in that. In the hierarchy of geeks and uh, gamers, LARP is near the bottom. We're just above furries. Yeah, we seem to be the redheaded stepchildren of the gamer world. So do I receive any negativity? Yes, <laughs> yes I do. Does it roll off my back? Absolutely. I don't really give a crap what other people think about it. It's, I mean, I thought it was ridiculous at first watching it on the outside, but once you're in there, it's a lot of fun. So I really don't put much opinion on what others think about it. The Beata is yelling at him in words that even if you're able to hear, you don't think you would be able to understand. Once more, he yanks back his head and slits his throat. No! Attack him! 14 magic. Why are you not doing it? What is holding you back? Is it because you feel like you're gonna be a nerd? Because I'll be honest, I am one of the youngest people here and I am 24. We all just have fun. Once a month we have a new player orientation that uh, some of the veteran players take people out and just sort of give them a little taste of you know, what you can expect. We are a very friendly group, open. Uh, we have wing night every Wednesday where we invite people to come down, join us, talk to us, hear all the stories that have happened or what has happened to their characters. Even if you're shy, there's people who have personality disorders who are here in LARP right now. And they do fine because like, 
the thing is, is you're not yourself. You're being who you want to be. And for example, I'm a nice metalhead, but in LARP, I am a devious, poor bard who begs and never gives anyone any money and steals what he can. And I can do that, and I don't feel bad. <laughs> Um, we've uh, seen several people that are like extreme introverts, not really sociable people. Within a year, they've changed. More outgoing, they're, they talk more, they have more outspoken, they interact with other people more often. It's a community, a friend, a great community of friends that we've created. The people that play make it better than anything else. Everyone is incredibly warm, very accepting, just good people. So anytime you get a group of good people together, it's going to be a fun time no matter what you do. So. I just say give it a try. Mock it all you want, but give it a try, and most people really enjoy it. Even though they don't come back, it's an experience they don't have, and it's an experience that we provide that is outside the normal routine of their life. Once you're in the moment and you're in character or playing your character, it's a lot of fun. This is my weekly extra boost of exercise. This is my um, socialization. This is my, this is my entertainment every week. I know how much fun I have out here, and I, I know in my heart that I am still a true gamer, and I don't need to prove my geek cred to anybody, so. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely work on that part. Where will we find you, my lady? I'll be back tonight. Yes, ma'am. All right, then. Very good. Hi, that was a week weird. LARP helps you to live out your fantasy, be the hero. But what if that isn't what you're looking for? Instead of a whole new world, you just want to be something else in this one. A more bombastic version of yourself. An outlet for your wilder side. Something to escape from the mild-mannered day-to-day -day life and become a new you. A fabulous, sassy you. This new you can be fearless and bold. Tell it like it is and let no one bring you down. This new you is the star of the show. Tonight is Carly's Angels here at Lolita's Lounge in Inglewood. It is a rigorous, risque, if you will, musical review of men, female impersonators that basically do character tributes, comedy, stand-up, things like that, but all to uh, other music, and we lip-sync to other people's songs, basically. We've been so well-received that I think that's part of what's opened us up to having sell-out crowds constantly, going into different venues, working in different venues, and we're seeing more people being able to go out and do shows like this, and I think it's because we were just there in that pioneering part. Right, just the right time. If you're a woman, 
If you're a woman and you're spending two fucking hours to get ready to go out for a night out garlic, like, your men have reasons to bitch at you. Because you're taking just as fucking long as a man does to turn into a woman. <laughs> I've been doing drag 20 years now. 14 here at the show, 20 in total. If you count, if you want to, like, say, legally going to a bar doing drag, that would be 20 years now. If you want to be technical, I was four. <laughs> So I've always been a character and liked to act. I was always in high school choir, acting, the whole works, all the way up, four years in the university, too. I began in Regina, of all places, uh, way back in the beginning there. Everything was very quiet. You, you didn't really go out there. You weren't parading down the streets. You were getting dropped off at the bar by the cab so that you were close to the venue, things like that. I couldn't go into a shoe store in Regina to try on shoes unless you knew somebody that worked there and you could go on a quiet time on a Monday or a Tuesday and you could go to the back of the store where people wouldn't see you and if somebody came in the other salespeople would distract people at the front so they didn't see this kind of stuff going on so nowadays it doesn't matter where you go you just go try on a pair of shoes you walk into the store you ask for your size and everyone's just really like oh yeah sure no problem blah, 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 blah. the women are all in there going holy crap I can't walk in them like that so they get pissed off and they walk out of the store and they don't make any sales I've always sort of just had the attitude where I just if you take me as I am or don't. So it's like I've never had to hide out trying to do things because I've never lived my life that way. Yeah. I was like I, when I came out, I blew that closet door off. I was like, you need to accept me now, and like here's all the periodicals you need to read, and you know, psychiatrist, sure, let's go to the drink, you know, all that kind of stuff. I just like totally no problem. But it took me 20 years to get to terms with my own self, right? So I had a lot of practice. Family are fantastic, but I had to come out twice to them, you know, obviously once as gay, once as drag. And that was pretty tough for them for being small town newfies. But it took about three years and they accepted it. And then the one thing that made them accept it was coming to see a show. Really did. What I basically come back to is that this city is not really as redneck as you fucking think. Truly, it's fantastic. And we've been here 14 years pushing doors, pushing buttons, and of course opening up the minds of all you lovely kids out there, especially you gentlemen. Not over yet. You're gonna be questioning a lot of shit after this evening. Anyway. Drug, a drug addict, bitchy, effeminate. It's usually the stereotype. And I think we want to be women. A true drag queen's not in it for pre-op, transsexual stuff. Not that there aren't people who want to become the opposite sex. But true drag queens are really in it for the performance. Everyone has, I think, their own thing that they contribute to it uh, in different ways. Some are about big, huge, elaborate costumes. The more feathers, the more rhinestones, the more headdresses, the more Vegas, the bigger, the better, the bolder. Some are all about long 50-foot trains that go through the entire bar as they're walking through. And so I'm the one who'd be more prone to do something burlesque, where I would actually strip down to just a bra and panties, like just a little G-string and panties on the stage. And people are like, what the? You know, so I'm about that kind of shock value with, with the illusion of it. Because it's made for comfort. <laughs> Built for wear and tear. Where else would you find such a easy chair? <laughs> it's a good night, it's a blast, it's something different for a lot of people. Our audience, we cater to a different audience. We don't cater to gays as much as we do to straights here. The straights appreciate it a lot more because they haven't seen it for the last 35, 40 years, right? We had one guy call, cat call us out on stage, and he was quite rude about it. This is a long time ago. And uh, he's like, you're lucky I don't pull out my 35 millimeter and blow your gay ass away or something like that during the show. Well, that's, uh, it was like, you know, okay, testing the waters. So then I just shot right back at him and says, 35 millimeters, honey? Is that all I'm gonna expect from you? I hope you got something with a bigger bang kind of thing. And he started sort of chuckling to himself, right? Anyway, long story short, after the end of that, he stayed for the whole show, and at the end of it, he actually came up to me and shook my hand and said, you know what, it's not my kind of thing, but you guys made me kind of chuckle, so it was pretty good. So it was cool. So it's changing, changing minds, which Oprah would say, this is why we do the show. You know, for all of those who teased and tormented and everything else, it has been a great life to just go ahead and still do what I want to do and to be all of who I am and just embrace that. And um, they say the best revenge is living well. And I think I have lived so well beyond my means, just, just given the opportunities that I've had, so. We decided to get into this wonderful city and just blow it by storm. Who are you texting? <laughs> uh, you don't need to log in.
we escaped into a realm of dragons and magic. We spent some time in a world of glamour and lights. But what if you really don't want to leave reality at all? Just finally rule over the life you have. The world is full of obstacles we can't control. Everything from the weather to overbearing management. Sometimes you just need to take control of something for yourself. Prove you're strong enough to overcome. Run a marathon, climb a mountain, or maybe try something a little more exotic. While many believe the act of suspension to be grotesque and strange, the people involved in the suspension community tell a very different story. So what am I feeling right now? I'm a little bit anxious, a little bit excited. Letting it all kind of go. <laughs> uh, how did I get into this? Uh, I started getting pierced by Dan about two years ago, and uh, just kind of through the internet, I saw the whole suspension thing and wanted to try it out, and everyone was there to help me out with it. I think it's just kind of trying to show myself that I can, like, I was always a big wuss with pain. Um, so kind of trying to show myself that I can actually do it and kind of force myself and, and be able to handle something that's kind of way out of my comfort zone. I've been a professional body piercer since uh, May of 97. Uh, my first experiences with suspension were in the end of the 90s, the early 2000s with a group called I Was Cured. Uh, I had really negative experiences with the suspension community at the time. Um, kind of stepped away from the community as a whole for yeah, about 10 years. And then uh, when I took Doug on as the apprentice, he kind of harassed me back into it. And I've had uh, extremely good experiences with it since then, having come back because I had had such bad experiences and it was awesome to reconnect with a community that I had completely disassociated myself with. Nowadays, like you even look at the stuff that was being done in 2005 versus the stuff that's being done now and it's changed completely. Uh, the safety standards have come into play, um, no one's getting dropped, no one's getting injured and that kind of stuff. As well as just the amount of thought that goes into proper rigging now is, is crazy. And then there's the piercing aspect of it. A lot of people are placing things a lot better. A lot of people are placing things at a proper depth now. Um, you go back a couple of years ago even, and people were placing things way too shallow with pretty much debarbed fishing hooks. Uh, I did my first one in May, I think it was. After I did my first one, I loved it so much that I decided, heck, Let's do 12 suspensions in 12 months. I wasn't really intending on going up today, but to be honest, I had a really crappy week and I just felt like I needed to do a suspension. <laughs> was it painful? Yeah, suspensions hurt. Once I was up, you know, I was, I was good. I found my happy place, I came down, I got a good cry out of it. I feel so much better now, so it's got that. My first suspension was super fun. Uh, I did four points for my back. Generally, that's how everybody does their first one. I went up, uh, it took me about 15 minutes to get off the ground. Once I was up, I was flinging around the room, uh, doing ninja kicks at people. I tried to kick Dan in the face a couple times. I've done a lot of suspensions and they're super fun. And I've done a lot of suspensions that are like, really emotional. It's not scary. Um, it's one of those things, that it's not scary, it's not dangerous. And the thing that a lot of people get really worried about and really concerned about is that they think that their skin is going to tear, they think that it's going to rip, they think it's going to be unbearable, they think there's going to be a horrible, gigantic mess left on them. And the thing is, is there's not. I have 
tons of experience piercing. Doug has a ton of experience with suspension piercing. And you're not going to have any problems like that. It's just not going to happen. I don't suspend because I hate my parents or had a shitty childhood. Everyone seems to think that, but it's not true. I actually had a fantastic childhood. And my mom actually, this is probably one of the only suspensions that she hasn't Skyped in for. We usually Skype her in so that she can watch and because uh, she lives in Ottawa, but she's hoping to come out, watch me do a suspension. She actually wants to pull me off the ground. Like My parents are super, super supportive of it. So despite what a lot of people think, it's not about that. It's not about the hooks. It's not about like, ooh, it's super painful. It's just, it's a really positive, enlightening experience. And you know, I just, I love sharing that with people. So come out talk to us worst case come and see an event okay you know they're welcome to the public the only rule really is, is don't show up and be an asshole if you act like an asshole we're going to tell you to leave but that's about it so Most people involved in cultures considered to be outside of social norms find that the fear most people have towards their hobbies and lifestyle are primarily driven from a lack of knowledge. Hanging oneself from hooks isn't everyone's idea of letting off steam. And performing dressed as the opposite gender doesn't have universal appeal. However, being brave enough to pursue their interests these people were led into the arms of a community of people just like them. A community that sees through the prejudices of the uninformed. A community that refuses to adhere to social norms and fight for open-mindedness. Hoping that one day, everyone can find the place they belong. <laughs>